hi guys welcome back to my channel this is engineers guide hi everyone let's talk about the fire pump the overview the installation and how the pumps work now this is a typical fire pump room so in a typical fire pump room it has to have a jockey pump a fire driven electric pump then we should have diesel but in some places they would not have the diesel but they are going to have two electric which is also good and on that state what then do we have to put in place so then we can be able to use two electric at the same time because the plan the initial plan for putting a standby diesel generator is that in case there is power outage then because it runs on a battery then it will just run automatically on battery but here is the case we have two electric so let me know if you know the answer and why is it necessary that we put these two electric pumps and if we put two what do we do to the other so then it can just match the description and the specifications that be one okay let me know in the comment section so a typical fire pump room has to have a fire water tank and a fire water tank has to have its labeling so here you can see two eight nine six seven gallons the capacity has to be visual okay and the lines also has to be labeled so you could see the arrows pointing this is test line and it's pointing directly this is the bypass valve and that's the flow meter and we have the throttle valve also as well so from here also you can see that they've put in prf so pressure relief number one that is for the electric fire pump number one so from here you could see that the labelings and everything is in its right proportion so from here the arrows are going to direct you what you see here is the o s and y valve for the suction of the electric fire pump one so you could also see that this is the suction header and you could see the directions one is going straight going to the left side and the other is coming towards me so from here this water is going to go it's sucked from here then through to here then you could see the minus gauge so it will the pump is going to suck the water from its suction point then it will propel it to its discharge and discharge it so this is the discharge pressure gauge okay so on that you would find the check valve that is the nrv which allows water to go in one direction only and above it is what the sensing line initially sorry there was pressure gauge here but it has been removed that is why you could see if not they supposed to have put in elbow 90 degrees elbow but now it's the so then in case we want to put pressure gauge to monitor the pressure we could just see all right and basically because this is above so then we've made it common by putting one piece there on the main discharge line instead of wasting much pressure gauges so we have to put one piece here on this side and put the other one here on the jockey and put here so it's going to be three so the water is all in the same so then we just put it just directly on the discharge manifold all right so continuing from the check valve you know before the check valve there is this relief line and the relief line has to be has been set in a way to protect to protect the casing all right this is horizontal split case and to just protect it in case it runs and the system there is it, it was just a minor leak that caused that so whilst the pump will be running for a whole lot of time the pressure that has been set on the prv if it's achieved it will just relieve the system okay so water will just be flowing rather than water staying here and heating up the case thereby destroying or damaging the impeller all right 
so it's mostly important most they will put the um, conchal valve that is what we call the casing relief valve but then if the casing relief valve does not come you could just put also the pressure relief valve mostly it is being put on the diesel line but now some have adapted by putting it on the electric also which is quite helpful because it also helps to just reduce and from here you see this circulation valve okay you can see there is a PRV also to just control the amount of pressure that circulate to just cool this one all right and there is valve also attached and we have the air release to relieve the pressure and the air trapped in the system basically also we have the casing relief valve also here so it means the protection it's quite more this is protecting the casing right so it has been set now let's say if this is operating operating in uh, um, 300 psi all right and this has been set more than it will be set this is the highest right so in case okay you let us do it correctly <clears throat> so we will check the name plate all right so from the name plate you could see that we have 343 maximum net pressure is 343 psi all right that is the maximum 343 so we're just close like 300 all right actually this is this pumps is serving a tower which is like 26 floor level all right so then if it's 364 we could set this one to like 350 all right this is the maximum so we could set it to like 350 so the more that it will run for up to 350 it will start to relieve the pressure but the very moment there is um, actual fire because the sprinkler or the hose rail is going to be used we are not going to get that maximum pressure because it will just be going right so then it will be able to just you um, accumulate and then that time because this has not achieved its level of discharging it will not discharge it will just hold on thereby being used there even if it's discharging when it's still 350 because they are using just one hose rail just near it can relieve and there also there will be much pressure also going there like that so it's for safety purposes all right so then looking at this you will see that after the check valve we have the sensing line and from the sensing line we have this butterfly valve then straight to the discharge manifold from this side you could see that there is a line that has been tapped here which is going to the testing line so with this when you would want to do the testing you have to close the discharge valve okay so you will close it so the water that is coming from this electric will go directly there then you can use all right now the same applies when you want to test you need to close both valves close this valve then close this valve all right then the water is going to go onto the manifold of the test line then you can operate using your throttle valve and the bypass valve all right okay so from this side also it's just the same thing it comprises of the suction manifold the suction coming directly to this elbow to this suction line this is the compound gauge then directly going to the check valve there is another valve and this line is going to the test line like that all right and the controller that we are using is Eaton. All right, I will just make um, a video on that, how it operates. Okay, and from here also, this is the pressure chart. So then it's a high pressure pump, and 
the jockey pump has to start 275 and the cutout is 285 the duty is 270 and the standby is 260 which is you can just switch it off manually all right now manually in the sense that it has to run until somebody comes to put it off this is the requirement in our local jurisdiction all right so then every pump room has to be well ventilated it has to be visual with light in it with an exit light you could see from there and this is actually a domestic pump also that is also here like that right it has to have different power supply not directly interconnected so with this this is um, actually the irrigation okay irrigation pump all right then all has to have different power supply it has to be ventilated this is the fresh air fan this exhaust fan here it's a, one is supply and the other is ex exhaust all right so let's move on now in the pump room this is the jockey pump that we spoke about here this is the jockey pump it also have a check valve the same principle with the valve also as well here so then when the cutting when the pressure comes up onto 275 the jockey will automatically start and the jockey is auto start and stop and from our charts we got to know that it starts at 275 and stops at 285 so basically at 285 it's going to stop now that it's not working it's not that it's not in operational mode it means to say it is in its range of cutout that's why it has not come to its cutting that is why it is still in not in running mode all right so when this one runs at 275 and there is no pressure loss it will just stop immediately okay but if it runs and there is more pressure drop and it drops up to 270 then the electric is going to start also as well and if this does not is not able to supply the needs of the or the ones uh, the needs the required pressure that is in the system then when the pressure reduces up onto 260 then the second electric pump is also going to run like that sequentially like that it's a sequential process all right and with that someone has to come to just switch it off manually okay so now the sensing line is directly from this it's connected to the middle then directly coming to the controller okay so we have the sensing line and every sensing line has to have a check valve which is in opposite direction i will explain more to that now this is a sensing line they've put inside this and they are using a copper the material that is being used is copper half inch copper all right so you can see the direction see the direction instead of going to the other side downwards it's going upwards okay so with this somebody will ask how then does the water flow from the system from here and it comes here it's in opposite direction right so somebody will be asking why how will the system sense the pressure all right anybody who knows the answer can just give us the answer in the comments below all right thank you very much and you could see that there is one line that has been put here this is what we call the interlocking interlocking means to say then that when there is a sudden pressure drop and one of the fire pumps starts the, the electric fire pump one starts because it's cutting is first the electric pump two has to be signaled not to run even if the pressure reduces up to zero so far as this one is running this one is not supposed to run they want it to run with respect to one is running one wouldn't be running so then unless this one has been stopped before this one can run so if this one trips in case there is rail fire and pressure drops immediately this one starts even if it drops up onto zero this is not going to run all right this is what we call the interlocking so this one will not run and after this one trips or goes off 
then automatically this is also going to start in case there is power outage okay so i nearly explained the question that i asked okay but i would want you to just comment with the answers why we have two electrics all right then here this is the jockey i actually made it off because we have leakage on the system and we are trying to rectify it now all right so later on i will just put it on and i will just demonstrate and make the video on how this pump uh, how to calibrate how to set it up i believe most people are asking of that this is actually eaten all right so just stay tuned and thank you for watching if you have any questions submission please don't forget to just comment the questions below and we are going to answer every question and the people that are there will also don't forget to like share and subscribe thank you and stay tuned for more bye bye